Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Amira of the Little Mushroom Cap, and today I have a fun kind of like sharing session with you an experience of me quilting with rulers on a domestic machine. So I'm going to go through a couple of things that you need for quilting with a domestic machine, and then I am going to kind of bring you along uh, my process of quilting a real quilt using the domestic using the domestic machine and also the quilting rulers. If you're wanting to learn how to use rulers with your domestic machine, you want to watch this to the end. So we'll look at the tools that I'm going to be using um, for ruler quilting. So the first thing is that you need a free motion quilting foot. So this one is the regular hopping one with a plastic clear one. And then you also can get the ruler one. This one is a convertible one that's um, suitable for my machine and you can get a generic one this one is pretty cheap and you can adjust the height of the position of this foot so you can see it's thick for the ruler quilting whereas it's thin for the regular ones and then we look at the different types of quilting rulers that you can use with your domestic machine so i have this one which is the multi clamshells this is the one that i use for the quilts that i'm about to show you today and this one has a really nice thickness to it and it's pretty heavy so I put this sticky one so that it actually have more um, friction to the quilt so it doesn't move and holds on to that quilt as you move the quilt so you can change this uh, I mean it doesn't come with a sticky part but you can actually just put that these two are my favorite but I can't link to this because they don't have it available anymore but I like that they have a holder on top of it and then they also have this sticky velcro at the bottom and some of the lines that's useful for quilting and then this one I got from Amazon it was a cheaper version you can see how thin that is it's a bit flimsy as compared to the other two and I really to be honest I don't really like it um, but you can still get those as well so I'm gonna get to the machine now and I'm gonna show you how to use this ruler coating using the normal hopping free motion coating foot so as you can see the thickness of this coating foot is actually quite thin and you can see as a, compared to that ruler is quite thick and same goes with this one so even when it hops the ruler because it's actually thick it doesn't bothers as much whereas for this cheaper one you can see that the thickness is almost similar to the foot itself so what happens is that when the foot hops you kind of can slide this under the quilting foot which can be really dangerous right so for this i'm going to use the straight line quilting ruler and as you can see the handle on the quilting itself kind of like um, allows me to handle it and then I'm pushing the ruler towards the quilting foot so that um, that's how you get kind of guidance on uh, the movement of the quilt itself so that is how it works you basically push the rulers against the quilting foot sides so that's why if you have a ruler quilting foot it's much easier because the size of it is actually bigger so as you can see when i'm moving the quilt i'm actually moving both my hands and also the ruler itself so that is how you move the quilt when you're working with a domestic machine so this actually guides me to make a simple straight line easily if I'm using the free motion quilting foot. Now you may wonder why we actually want to use a free motion quilting foot but sometimes when you're you're changing switching from free motion design to ruler quilt to straight lines it's actually easier to use the rulers. So as you can see from here this is what I meant like if it's thin and your foot is hopping up this ruler can easily slide under and this can be really dangerous as it can just drop under the needle and the needle can actually break and it could be really hazardous for you and also for the machine as well. So it's really important to get a really good ruler I guess. Um, thicker one is better especially for this one so you can see even though it's hopping or it's not like it's not at the position at the bottom you can see that as it hops it doesn't goes up above the ruler itself so you can just move really slow um, as you get used to with any quilting you do need a lot of practice so basically i am here just practicing as well and i am just doing it really really slow until i get the pace that i can go at so simply do that again um, for all the sides um, and i'll move on to 
different kind of rulers and share you more tips. So now I'm going to be showing you how I use this multi clamshell ruler. So you can see different sizes of clamshells are around this ruler. So it's very useful because there are a lot of different sizes. And if I were to use it using this pre-motion quilting foot, which is the normal one, standard one, you can see that I can't really put my ruler against it really well just because it has that kind of a handle right there. So for this particular ruler, I suggest that you have to get a ruler quilting foot because it basically just can't get you close enough to that um, to that side of the fill remission coating foot. So you need to get to be able to be at the side. So I can work on this size, but I can't work on this side. So that kind of limits the movement of my free motion quilting. And that's why I highly recommend that you can use the ruler foot instead so this is what i have here i'm using the generic one to show you guys you can see that the sides are all the same and it's quite thick all around so you have a round and you can adjust the height of that using the um, the screw so you can actually adjust the screw and position it in the way that you can actually reduce the pressure of the foot on the quilt itself so it kind of floats so it doesn't hop this one doesn't hop and it floats on the quilt instead. If I were to start quilting now, so you can see I can actually put my ruler really against all sides of my quilting foot. So if I were to start at the corner right here, you can see I can just put that clamshells, I can align that line that I have, the guideline on the clamshell right on top of the lines that I just, uh, the line of the frame. So that is where I'm going to start. So I'm gonna quilt. I'm gonna stitch a little bit of stitches to just secure the position, and then I'm going to hold on to the ruler and the quilt, and then just bring that while pressing the foot of the sewing machine. So you can see you can use the guide lines to be somewhere in the center, and then slowly move. The I think the hardest part is actually trying to keep the movement consistent because when you start you tend to be a little faster and that's why you tend to actually have um, different stitch length across the curve so i think that is something that we all need to kind of like practice as we go about doing this so i as you can see i'm just pressing against the quilt and i am pushing the ruler towards the foot all at all times and that way the foot is guided by the template itself or the quilting ruler. So I just go slowly. Um, I can see that right now my quilting foot is actually quite loose, which is dangerous. So I just tighten that again. So you can use, make sure that the quilting foot you set up is actually really tight so that you do have that as a guidance. So I'm just finishing off this to the other sides. And then I'm going to use the valleys as the reference for the second layer. Now, just before I go into that, I actually want to change the ruler because I think I feel like I'm using the... Instead of using the generic one, I'm going to use the one that comes with the Genomi machine. So I'm going to use that for the second layer. So now I am using a different foot. As you can see, this is the Genomi convertible foot. It's still the same ruler quilting foot and I'm just starting from the center. I'm using the center guidelines and that is going to be right at the center of the right of the lines that I just draw. So basically I'm holding on to the ruler. It's a bit fidgety because I didn't have the flat surface, but if you hold on to it with both hands, it should be okay. So I'm just holding it with both hands and kind of holding the other fingers are holding the quilt. And I'm pressing the ruler against the side of each of, uh, of the foot. Now I love this quilting ruler just because it has that stop position right at the line there. So you get really accurate kind of like placed where to stop from one clamshell to the other clamshell layers. So that's why um, you get the valleys right at the tip of the previous clamshells. And see, you kind of like have to stop there because there's a line. So that's why I'm referring to this guideline, the straight line, trying to put from one peak to another peak of the previous plan channels. So 
I'm just going to continue on and I'm going to repeat this until I get a couple of layers. And I actually did this on my recent quilt, which I'm going to show you right here. So as you can see, this is me working on a real size quilt. Um, it's a small quilt, but the same movement applies if you're doing it with a practice piece. You can see now I actually pop in on top of the ruler a pop socket, which you put um, on the back of the film. I'll put a link down below as well. This has been really helpful. So now I don't have to have two of my hands on top of the ruler. Especially when you are moving a larger size quilt. So you just want to make sure that all the weights of the quilt itself is supported by all the tables around the sewing machine so that you're just moving a small part of the quilt and that is the same as a quilt practice sandwich. So I'm, I'm having fun doing this. It was really fun and super quick. I didn't uh, realize that it was going to be completed in just two sittings. Um, I did half of it in one sitting. I think it was about 30 to probably an hour to actually finish half of the quilt. So as you can see, I put my fingers in between and just really makes it easy if you put on the pop socket onto this quilting roller. So as you can see, sometimes I do find it a struggle to actually move the quilt. So when that point, I do have to kind of shift all the weight so that it's balanced. And you may find that moving from left to right or right to left would be easier for you. But I found that moving from, from the right to the left was harder than moving from the left to the right. But I just did left, right, left, right because I didn't want to... Um, take off the thread um, away from I mean I didn't want to cut off the thread so I went from left to right and then for the second layer I just go up and then do from right to left so this one was a quick finish uh, I really enjoyed the finish as well um, it was better than expected because this is my first time using this but I hope that you can try this as well if you want that clamshell look this is definitely the ruler that you want to find I'll put up all the links to these things and tools that I use and also if you are new to free motion quilting um, I also invite you to join my free motion quilting bootcamp course where I share more tips about free motion quilting so initially I want to uh, answer some of the questions but uh, because some people did ask why do you have to use a rule, quilting ruler when you just doing straight lines so this is an example where I can actually use a quilting ruler and also a, like a counter template and also do some free motion quilting design so you can actually add in the free motion bit and also have the template in one design so this is an example of how you can use it i'm also showing you right here is the image of me using the straight line quilting while doing some spirals and pebbles in one of the quilts that i'm working on right now so basically adding these different elements to the quilting design kind of like add the dynamic um, we can have like some geometric design and also free motion quilting design in one uh, one whole quilt and i think that really adds some um, difference to the quilt so you can see here i'm using the ruler to make those straight lines now i'm working with a large quilt right here that's why it's kind of hard and slow because i have to kind of shift a lot of the quilt but it's definitely possible so if you are up for a challenge this is definitely doable with a domestic machine So I hope you've enjoyed that bit of a, a kind of an experience of how I use this um, ruler. Um, I really do love the ruler because it has this really clear lines that you can refer to. I'm going to put a link down below if you're interested. Just make sure that you need uh, you do need a lot of practice. So if you haven't been pre-motion quilting, highly recommend that you start with simple motion first before moving on to ruler quilting. Yep. 
So um, I'm going to put a link to all of this uh, down below and also in the blog post you can actually find more details on how um, I work with rulers. Basically uh, this ruler, the pop socket that you can put on it and also the sticky part. So all of that really really does help and don't forget to actually use a supreme slider on your machine because that really really helps. So I forgot to actually put the supreme slider at the beginning and what happened was that it was so difficult to kind of move the quilt because I didn't have a good grip like we lost some of the grips on the quilt because we put the ruler instead. So the ruler is kind of gripping on the quilt and we're kind of moving the quilt with the ruler and also one part of our hand. That's why I kind of like, if you look at in the video, um, I kind of have to actually move my hand from time to time just so that I can move the quilt really smoothly. So with that, um, I would love to hear what you think about quilting with rulers on a domestic machine. If you have been doing it or if you're thinking about it, um, let me know in the comment and I'll see you again in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. And don't forget to click subscribe.